I would like to inform all parties that today's conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. I would now like to turn the call over to Bayward Catton. Thank you. You may begin. Thanks so much, and thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about our new map tool, which we're about to launch uh, starting tomorrow. Uh, we've made a lot of improvements based on your feedback, and we're really proud of it. We hope you like it too. Let me start off um, with a few uh, notes. We hold these webinars about every two months. If you want to be added to or removed from my notification list, you can contact me via data at HRSA.gov, and I'll take care of that for you. Um, as Dustin said, this session is being recorded, and we'll, we're going to later feature it on our how-to videos section of our website. I'm going to take questions after I go through the slide deck, and then again at the end of the demonstration. So today we're going to talk about a few things. First of all, I'm going to give you an overview of the HRSA Data Warehouse and our website. We're going to talk about some of the improvements we've made over the last year, and then we're going to get into the main event, which is a demonstration of our new map tool. This is a sneak preview, so it's not quite finished yet. There's a few um, little things here and there that we're still working on, um, but uh, it is available publicly for you to take a look at, and I'll show you how to do that. We're going to talk about how to submit feedback. If you notice anything on the site that seems uh, wrong or that you want us to add, you can contact us. And then finally, we'll do the, uh, the last round of questions and answers. If you would like to, you can follow along as I do the presentation. Uh, the website, as I said, is data.hersa.gov. And um, the map tool is accessible through the Maps tab at the top. So let me tell you a little bit about our site. The HRSA Data Warehouse site is where HRSA's public data lives. It's the enterprise site repository for HRSA. So we have information on health centers, um, HIV care providers, storage areas, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we have a lot of um, maps that you can access that are already made, as well as creating your own, which I'm going to show you how to do. We also have data dashboards, which let you see data visually, and data that you can download and use offline. This is our site. We um, redesigned it about a year ago, and we're, we've been continuing to make improvements based on your feedback. We streamlined the navigation, reorganized it, and made it just generally easier to use. We also shortened the domain name. Um, so we've made all these um, upgrades with you in mind, and we've also added how-to videos. If you go to the Help tab and click How-to videos, uh, you'll find that all of these webinars as well as some other presentations have been uh, archived there. Another addition is the uh, fact sheets. We've updated our fact sheets. Fact sheets are PDF files that you can just download and print out or bring to a meeting or distribute as you wish. It provides summaries of versus activities uh, from a uh, various uh, perspectives. And it now also includes uh, information on opioid grant funding. If you're interested in uh, HRSA's grant information, you can also see that we've redesigned Find Grants. We have a much more intuitive design that's easier to use. It all takes place on one screen, so you don't have to click around. Uh, the results are easier to read in the table that comes up. And uh, we have grant information from the last 10 years to today. I mentioned data dashboards. Uh, data dashboards are a way of interacting with data visually through um, on-screen dynamic uh, visualizations, such as maps, charts, things of that nature. Um, we have a whole lot on the website, as you can see. Um, we have dashboards for grants, shortage areas, sites, demographics, and so on and so forth. Another huge um, upgrade we've done recently is to our data explorer. This is what used to be called the data portal. Um, we want to thank all of you who gave us feedback on the data portal. Uh, we feel like we've made it a lot better. The Data Explorer now uh, gives you a much more intuitive path as you navigate the tool. Uh, you can change your query dynamically now. You don't need to keep starting over. And you can better understand what you're going to be getting in your results before you run the query because you can see a little preview of what, it, what exactly you're getting. And also the data is more clearly described. 
So we're here to talk about the MAP tool today. So I wanted to kind of give you a quick overview of all of our mapping options. Uh, here they are listed from easiest to most powerful. The map gallery is a collection of PDF files, similar to the fact sheets. You can just download these and then you have them. They're updated every night automatically in the system. So when you download it, it has information um, from usually the previous day. Um, we have quick maps as well. Quick maps are, I'm going to just put you on hold just for a minute. Uh, go ahead and ask your question uh, when we take questions at the end of the slide deck. It will just be about five or ten more minutes. Quick, ma quick maps, as I say, are shortcuts to the map tool. So they put you into the map tool um, interface, but with pre-populated information. Um, we have some of our most popular maps already set up for you, so you can just click and go to the map tool with all the data filled out. The map tool, if you go to the map tool by itself, you start with a blank map, and then you, you kind of build it step by step. The quick maps are intended as a, a, a quick way of uh, bypassing that process. However, for the most customization, you're going to want to use the map tool itself, and I'm going to be showing you how to do that. So why did we, uh, why did we upgrade the map tool? Well, we had some, uh, some feedback that it was a little bit awkward to use. Uh, as you can see, the, um, it's sort of wide and there's a little bit too much space up top, so we kind of we trimmed that down. The information in the, uh, in the menu on the left there was a little bit hard to find. You had to go through a whole lot of menus to find what you needed. And the resolution of the printouts uh, was not the best. It was a little low res. So the new map tool has a searchable data menu on the left. You can type what you want to find and it'll locate anything related to that. The interface has been much improved. The navigation's better. It works better on mobile devices. Uh, you can actually um, connect to APIs. APIs are data sources on the web and I'll show you how to do that. And we have much more uh, clarity in the printed output now as well. So what I'm going to show you today is um, how to use that instant search to add data to your map, how to jump to a specific location on the map by using the other search box, how to navigate, how to toggle the legend and uh, control the layers so that they are um, as you want them in terms of which one's on top, and how to toggle different backgrounds, and as I said, how to connect to remote API data, as well as how to upload your own um, file and map that. So if you'd like to get in touch with us, we'd love to hear from you. Our email address is data at hrsa.gov. You, um, you can write to me there and uh, ask when the next webinar is going to be and be added to the list so I can notify you. Some of you were uh, referred to this meeting by your colleagues, so you're not on my list yet, so make sure and get in touch if you'd like to be on it. If you have any feedback about our site, we want to hear about it. It can be critical. We don't mind. You're not going to hurt our feelings. We need to know if anything's not working or if, uh, if you feel it could be better. Uh, we're also very interested in getting uh, new data sources, so if you have a line on that, let us know. And we're also going to be um, releasing some new reports soon, including um, one for health centers and scopes. So with that, um, Justin, I'd like to open it up and see if anyone has any questions so far. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star one, unmute your phone, and record your name clearly. Your name is required to introduce your question. If you need to withdraw your question, press star two. Again, to ask a question, please press star one. It will take a few moments for the questions to come through. Please stand by. Incredibly nice. We show no questions at this time. Okay, no problem. We'll jump right in and we'll see if anyone has any questions by the end of the demonstration. All right, so this is our website, data.hrsa.gov. Um, it does a lot, as I sort of touched on. But if you want to do stuff with maps, obviously, maps tab is where you do that. 
You can reach some of the other items I mentioned, like map galleries. Quick Maps is here. Fact Sheet Maps is here. And there's also some map services and APIs here. But what we're interested today in is the map tool. So you just click right here. You can follow along with me if you like. Okay. So this is the, um, the current map tool here. As I said, we have not launched the new one yet. It's still, it's still loading, it looks like. But if you want to reach the, uh, the upgraded map tool, you just go up to the top, this blue banner, and uh, click here. Okay, here we are. So this is the, uh, the page that you start on. Uh, in order to add data to the map, you use this menu on the left here. And if you have specific uh, information that you want to search for, you can just type it right here into this instant search box. If you prefer, you can, you can look through uh, the site, like the, the pages like so, how like we did in the past. You can just go ahead and expand to find health center grantees or what have you. But if you have a specific topic you're interested in, you can enter it right here. Okay, let's say you're interested in dental health. You can just type dental. and it will instantly go into all the menus and bring up just the ones that have to do with dental. Like this NHSC site, Total Dental Healthcare Provider FTEs is one thing you can click on. Once you've selected a data layer, you can choose the color for it to uh, represent and the symbol as well. So let's say I want this to be green. Okay. And you can also put a label if you wish, but you don't have to. Click Add Now to add it to the map. And these are the dental care provider FTEs. Um, this is the legend now appears automatically. So you can see that uh, this is the listing of what it is, and then the green dot is what is being represented. If you want to zoom in, you can do that. You can use your mouse wheel to zoom in or just use this plus, like so. Zoom out with the uh, minus sign. So. If you ever uh, want to return home to the, uh, the initial view, you can use this third button to go home to the default map view, like so. If you'd like to print, the next button is print. If you want to change the background, uh, use this button here. There's a whole lot of backgrounds that you can choose from. You can look at streets, topographic. The light gray canvas is a good choice if you're trying not to distract uh, the viewer with other, other um, information. So let's uh, look for some more information to add to this map over here. Let's say we want to look at um, dental health areas for um, health professional shortage areas. Let's just click here. And there they are, there's the purple area. Now if you want to um, move those points up to the top so that they're more easily visible over the areas, you can do that. What you would do is you would just click here And you can remove this layer or move it up or down. So we want to move it up so it's going to be on the top of the uh, stack of layers. Like so. If we zoom in, we'll see that more clearly. So now we have two different layers and we can uh, manipulate them in that way. You can also see in the legend, the dental health areas are uh, graded by HIPSA score. The darker the area, that indicates a higher HIPSA score. Uh, the darkest is 18 to 26. Uh, but what if you want to zoom to a particular part of the map? Well, there's another search box over here on the right that you can use to go to a particular place. Like let's say we just wanted to see Maryland. You can just type Maryland, you can type it out or just use the abbreviation. Zooms in, and there you have it. Um, let's see. So I want to also show you something really cool that's been added. Uh, which is the ability to connect to APIs or to upload your own data. So let me 
remove these layers so that it doesn't get too crowded. Take the little three lines and then choose remove. And then we're going to, uh, we want to go to your data. So your data allows you to add data to the map that you have in your possession. So you click on the drop down here. And you can do it in two ways. You can either connect data on the web, or you can uh, access a local uh, CSV file. CSV files, as you know, are comma separated value. You can create them using uh, Excel as well as other programs. So let's say I have a uh, spreadsheet of accredited dental schools. So I'm going to take that here. Oops. Accredited dental schools. And then you choose your color, choose your symbol. You can choose from circle, square, triangle, or diamond. Do diamond just for fun. Then we upload data to the map. And there they are. Now, it's important that you uh, have your, your columns in your spreadsheet named a certain way. Otherwise, uh, it won't know which ones are the lat and long. So the latitude column has to be either named lat, latitude, y, y center, et cetera. And longitude, likewise, has to be named long or longitude, something like that. Um, that's how the program knows what exactly it's looking for in terms of the uh, x and y coordinates. Now I want to also show you the, uh, how to connect the data on the web. You can go to uh, a web service and type in the URL right here or paste it in. But you can also, if you wish, uh, use uh, some of these pre preset ones. Like let's say you're looking for um, wildfires. You can just click here. It pastes it in for you. In this case, it's at wildfire.cr.usgs.gov. You can add that data to the map. And then if you want to look at current fires, just click here. Right, there are a few. You can look at fire perimeters. You can look at the fires from previous years, like here's 2008. Wow, there are a lot other than that year. And that's how to connect to remote data. With that, I believe I've gone through all my uh, bullet points. So I think we can go ahead and um, open it up to questions again, operator. Thank you. Again, as a reminder, please press star 1 on your phone and record your name if you have a question. One moment, please. Our first question is from Joe Carter. Go ahead. Your line is open. Thank you. I was just uh, I was going to ask about when uh, you add the layer for the HIPSA score. Um, uh -huh. You can't see through it. It's not translucent, so you can't really tell the mapping on the underside, is there a way to fix that so you can actually see, uh, can, other than seeing that the, I'm looking for more of a macro, if I want to look at a smaller area, if I'm looking around, uh, say, the Oklahoma City area or the Tulsa, Oklahoma area, I want to see the map and, and the way it lays around the city. Uh, and, and the map, uh, again, you can't see through it, so you can't really see the city. Sure, I see what you're saying. OK, uh, let's take a look. Let's go back to HIPSAs. OK, so we'll look at primary care areas. And you said you wanted to see the, uh, the street map. Is that right? Yeah, bring it down to more of a micro level. It doesn't really matter the area that you pick. Uh, it, it just uh, You're wanting to see does it, where, where this HIPSA lies, if, is, if I have a site that's on this side of the street and have a site that's on this side of the street, it may or may not be in the HIPSA, I'd like to know where the HIPSA boundaries are. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Well, obviously, you can zoom into any level, um, and you can also go uh, specifically to any city that you want to see. I think you mentioned Tulsa. 
Right now, I just have the plain uh, gray map background. So if we wanted to um, see here. So I, I see your point. This is something we'll take under advisement because it's, it's hard to see the actual city when uh, these layers are in here. Uh, what I can do is I can try to move it down. And the reason I ask is because if you do go to Hipsafind, uh, and it's, it's a data warehouse map, if you go to Hipsafind and you do an address search, you can click on the map there and it's, it's got the hipsters and you can overlay them and they're all translucent so you can see through them and see exactly where they're laying. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. I'm making a note about that and we'll sort of add that to our, uh, our punch list of things to take a look at. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank you. Our next question is from Marisa. Go ahead, your line is open. Hi, um, I had a question about the uh, database that you're you're attaching, um, you're uploading, and you said that the database would have to be formatted a certain way, longitude, latitude type of thing. Um, can you explain all that again? I, I, you know, if we're wanting to upload something specifically, I'm just not, you know, um, yeah, if you could explain that again. Absolutely. So basically, um, you just want to have a column. Let me see if I can find it here. There it is. So you want to have a column in your in your uh, spreadsheet that has this called latitude, and then you want to have one that's called longitude. Uh, that's how it knows what it's looking at. You can also do it as this one is. It has X and Y. So this is a very simple spreadsheet. It's got the name of the school city and state where it's located, and then it has the, the coordinates where it's located. And these, this D and E column is how the map tool knows where these things are. It's using the latitude and longitude to put the, the dot on the map. Does that make sense? Yes, and then where do you get the longitude and latitude coordinates? Right, so you would have to uh, geocode. It's called geocoding. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, that is something that, uh, that I believe that we do on a limited basis. And it's, uh, mm -hmm. So contact me offline at data at hersa.gov and we can talk more about that. Thank you. Sure. Our next question is from Tony. Go ahead, your line is open. Hi, um, I had uh, asked this question back at the reverse site visit and I knew this was coming. And so I was wondering if there's a way yet to actually isolate a state so that none of the border states are showing, just the state? I know you did one earlier where you zoomed in on Maryland, but you could still see the border states. Is there any way to just isolate a state? Sure, yeah, that's a great question. I remember uh, talking to you about that before. So the way we do it right now is we use the quick maps. Um, I know that that was something that we were looking at, um, at, at adding. I don't know if we have that yet, um, but um, I'm going to have to get back to you on that. I apologize for that, but, okay. but we do recognize that that's something that we need to add. Okay, great, thanks. Sure. We show no further questions at this time. Again, as a reminder, please press star 1 on your phone and record your name if you have a question. One moment, please. We show no further questions at this time. Okay, great. Uh, so to the gentleman who asked the last question about isolating a state, uh, please get in touch with me at, at data at hersa.gov and I will um, I'll keep you posted on, on how that progresses because I know that that's a feature that we need.
But it sounds like we've, uh, we've taken care of everybody, so I will give you the rest of your time back. Thank you all again so much for, um, for spending time with us today, and, um, and that's it. We'll see you in a couple months. That concludes today's conference. Thank you for participating. You may disconnect at this time.